All right, we've got 6 p.m. It's just about time to start Bald Eagles. I hope that you're as excited as I am. And thanks again for uh, the delay with rescheduling the program. I'm glad that tonight's finally here and we can talk about some Bald Eagle facts. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, this is Stephanie Morissette and I'm coming to you uh, on behalf of Crawfordsville District Public Library to present Bald Eagles. Uh, this evening's program will be about 30 minutes long and at the end of the program, at the conclusion, Montgomery County residents will have the opportunity to be entered into a drawing to win a pair of National Geographic beginning birding binoculars. And they are quite cute, I must say. Maybe cute's not the right word, but uh, I like yellow. So if that gives you any indication, they're pretty neat. Uh, but at the conclusion of the program is when we will have our patrons submit a question or comment on tonight's program. And then your name, along with your contact information, will enter you into a drawing for those binoculars. So without further ado, let's get started. Bald Eagle. The Latin name for the bald eagle is Haliadius leucocephalus. I love Latin because it's just fun to pronounce. But bald eagles are in the same family that is related to hawks, kites, and various vultures. If we break down the Latin for bald eagle, halo means sea, and this is sea eagles or one whole category of eagles in and of themselves. Eagle is aetos, and white is leucos. And once upon a time, white was actually you, the word bald was used for white, hence the name bald eagle. For many years, for generations in fact, um, Native Americans and indigenous peoples have had a high reverence uh, for, their, for a spirit animal or totem animal, and this is the bald eagle is one of those uh, birds. However, for us, this bald eagle didn't become our national emblem until 1782, when it was decreed as our majestic bird. Uh, originally, George Washington wanted it to be the wild turkey, but turkeys aren't very graceful and they're awkward and they really can't fly very far distances. Interesting to note too, the bald eagle is the only eagle unique to North America. Oh, sorry about that here, give me a second. Still learning my new laptop. Okay. Bald Eagle Range. The bald eagles, their range, is, their home territory, is. it can be anywhere between about two and a half miles to up to 15 and a half square miles. And that's anywhere between 1,700 to about 10,000 acres. Over half the bald eagle population resides in Alaska. And if I recollect my statistic correctly, that is approximately 70,000 bald eagles. In this map here, we can see that the lower 48 states are considered the non-breeding ground for bald eagles. However, we do know that we have nesting bald eagles right here in Montgomery County. Most breeding grounds occur up in Canada and then obviously on into Alaska. And some year round locations for bald eagles are generally along the coastlines. They're along the west coast and even along the east coast. On average, the lifespan of a bald eagle in the wild is, yeah. a, is about 25 years. Uh, I apologize if you hear my dog barking. Um, so 25 years, they have been known to live longer. There have been nests that have been active for upwards of 35 years. We'll discuss that here in just a little while. I like to discuss the fact that birds of prey or raptors, in this instance, bald eagles, display what's called sexual dimorphism. And that just simply means that the females are roughly 25% larger than the males. They mate for life. A lot of birds do. They build the largest nests in recorded history. And we're gonna see a picture of this here later on in the program. They can dive up to 100 miles per hour and that's a straight dive straight down. But on average, those dives are roughly 30 miles per hour when they're going in to snatch their fish right out of the water. You've heard the phrase, oh, you have eagle eyesight. 
Well, eagles have an extremely keen eyesight. In fact, it's four times sharper than that of the human. And what gives them this ability to have such sharp eyesight is they have two centers of focus. And that allows them to see both forward and to the side at the same time. Bald eagles, bald eagles can see several hundred feet uh, above their prey, upwards of 10,000 feet. And this can be where low, low flying planes are. So they can really get up there in height. They can also see their prey up to about a mile and a half away. So the eagle eyesight is, is true to source there. Eagles, like many birds, uh, owls, for instance, they have what's called a nictitating membrane. And I just like to look at this as a lateral eyelid windshield wiper. So this translucent eyelid moves from side to side across the eagle's eye while they are still able to see out of the eyelid. Eagles have both color vision and they can see in ultraviolet light. Some more interesting facts about bald eagles. Their beaks are very hook shaped. They look vicious and they're used for tearing meats and their fishes and their diets and gulping their prey, but they're fine enough that they can use them to groom their mates feathers and even tear small pieces of food for their chicks. If you look at the upper right hand image, you see there's the female image on the, the left and the male on the right. Let's look specifically at the where the beak line ends on the female. If we draw that line straight from the eye down, just behind the pupil straight down is where the female's beak is. If we look at the male, the line of the beak ends directly under the pupil. And this is one way the, the male and female can be separated because the females have deeper beaks than the males. Eagle talons are two inches long and capable of exerting a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. Imagine that 10 times stronger than a human hand. These huge talons that, are cap that have the capability of exerting a thousand pounds per pressure only have the ability to lift about four pounds. So anything a little greater than four pounds, they might drop their prey. Both beaks and the talons, and even their feathers are composed of keratin, which is the same substance that our fingernails and our hair are composed of. Eagles have roughly 7,000 feathers. Now who went and counted all an eagle's feathers and came up with 7,000? I'm not sure, but I'm sure it was probably an ornithologist or a bird scientist. Uh, birds do have to molt, but they do so in patches. So they don't lose all their feathers at once. They lose them in sort of clumps at a time. And eagles need to replace their feathers because they get damaged. They get frayed on the ends. They might get torn and beaten. They can even be broken. So eagles will lose those feathers in a molt and grow new ones. Like all birds in the respiratory systems that they have, eagles will on an inhale bring the breath in and circulate the air around the lungs twice before exhaling. Here in this image, we can see, if we look at the, at the background image, we can see a large wingspan of an eagle. The wingspan of eagles can be anywhere between six to eight feet. And the females with their dimorphism being larger than the male, weigh in at anywhere between 10 to 14 pounds whereas males weigh in between seven to 10 pounds. You look to the inset image, you can see on the left the image of the male and then the right is on, the female is on the right. You can distinctly see the size difference in the two. We talked about bald eagles being sea eagles. So we can deduce from that that eagles, sea eagles live near open waters or large bodies of water in adjacent areas such as lakes, streams, rivers, even marshes, but particularly along coastlines with forested areas along the edges. Bald eagles generally only hang out with their mate, so they're not very social birds. And the only manner in which they would be any kind of social is if they had to do uh, either a local or what's considered a complex migration. We'll discuss that here in just a second. Bald eagles, when they determine it's time that they might need to migrate, 
they'll grab thermal drafts of warmer air so that they can uh, gain more altitude. And these thermals allow them to fly further with less uh, physical expenditure. They don't have to flap their wings as much. So they follow these thermal drafts uh, and sort of chase their food supplies south, if you will, to where they have a better ability to hunt in the winter. If bald eagles are seen semi-migrating together, it's termed a kettle. So multiple eagles may be uh, tailing each other, if you will, following each other's tailwinds to find uh, an area to establish during the winter migration. The local or the complex winter migration that I spoke of, local simply is just what it is. They stay in the relatively same home area of their territory. Where a complex migration comes in, this would be where eagles might migrate further south. And these conditions that apply to a complex winter migration depend somewhat on age, uh, where their breeding location was, so how far north they were, and their food availability or local prey populations. Northern adult eagles will generally begin to migrate uh, late October into November. And they acquire their navigational information uh, and directional information from landscapes surrounding them, as well as the wind direction, the sun's position in the sky, and then finally the Earth's magnetic field. If we look at the image here on the right, we look there, we see winter, uh, wintering grounds. Indiana's right there in the, in the middle of their wintering grounds. Uh, I know that bald eagles have been commonly seen at Eagle Creek uh, Park in Indianapolis, hence the name. Um, so we're just right smack dab in, in the middle of part of their uh, wintering grounds. So the winter weather forces the eagles sometimes to be more social and they will seek communal roosts when the weather is particularly harsh. So they might congregate, uh, as you can see in the upper image there, there are multiple eagles in a relatively small space. Wildlife refuges or open bodies of water, eagles will congregate close to the open edge of that water on the ice, as you can see in the lower image. A couple of uh, areas where eagles would congregate would be fish processing plants where there's discharge and they have access to uh, some food availability, as well as hydroelectric dams where ice doesn't form around the spillways. And so there's always open water there for fishing. Sea eagles, we think of sea, we think of diet. We know that they're primarily fish eaters like salmon and herring maybe freshwater catfish. Eagles will pirate other birds' prey. When they feel like being lazy, they'll try to steal someone else's food. They'll scavenge meals, so they'll eat carrion or honestly roadkill. They'll hunt small mammals sometimes, sometimes reptiles, sometimes other waterfowl. They've even been known to eat garbage. They can consume about a pound of fish in four minutes, which think about Tearing up fish would sounds like a lot of work, so but it actually sounds like it goes pretty quickly too. Eagles regurgitate what's called a casting, which is where all the indigestible parts like fur, feathers, and scales get all mixed up with saliva and mucus, and then they regurgitate it or they, yeah, they puke it out. And owls have pellets, which are almost exactly the same thing only they call them casting and eagles and pellets and owls. I have a few bald eagle vocalizations that I'd like to play for you this evening. Hopefully technology is on our side tonight and you will be able to hear my vocalizations. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll get started with that. The first one that I wanna play is their flight or perch call. Now, I will tell you that when you hear this and you hear and you know that it's a bald eagle, you will probably be very surprised at how timid they sound. And another note here to emphasize is that a lot of times when we're watching TV and there's some kind of natural scenery happening and you see a bald eagle flying in the air, you hear the vocalization of a red-tailed hawk. And if you don't know birds, you wouldn't 
realize that. However, they dub in Red Tail Hawk because it sounds a little more menacing than the bald eagle. So let's try the bald eagle's call here. This next one is a flight alarm call. I think I'm having a technical difficulty. Perhaps not. Okay, we've got another flight alarm call to listen to. And finally, the captive call. Okay, well, unfortunately, I don't know that my sounds came through. However, duly noted, we will have these posted for you as an addendum to the program as soon as possible. Uh, when we post the program to our website, we'll add the addendum as soon as we can. So I apologize for that and we'll get the eagle sounds to you in the coming days. Bald eagle wasn't as prevalent always as it is now. And even as far back as 1918, there was concern about species that migrated from one location to another. And so, a lot of waterfowl were on this list and including the bald eagle. So in 1918, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act prohibited the killing, capturing, selling, trading, or anything to do with a protected migratory species. And the bald, like I said, the bald eagle was on that list. The reason that the Migratory Bird Treaty Act was passed is because that when the birds migrated, whatever birds they were, they were usually overhunted and then as development of agricultural lands came along, there was habitat loss and birds didn't have quite as enough area as they needed during migration. Continuing on, the bald eagle population was beginning to be of concern. And we're going to get to these reasons here in a moment. But in 1940, the Bald Eagle Protection Act was passed that prohibited really anything that had to do with an eagle alive or dead or any of its parts, feathers or whatnot, including nest and eggs. If you did not have a permit, which meant mostly everyone, then you could not harvest any part of an eagle or anything from an eagle, such as its nest or eggs. By 1973, when the Endangered Species Act went into effect, the bald eagle was right there at the top of the list. And the reason for that is that they were endangered of becoming extinct because there were so few in the population that were left. Uh, endangered as opposed to threatened or a species of concern, there are different levels of um, criteria in the Endangered Species Act where endangered is at the top of the list and species of concern is towards the bottom of the list, but still nevertheless listed. And so bald eagles were further protected by law and this was done through the banning of an agricultural pesticide called DDT. Once DDT was outlawed, bald eagle populations began to slowly improve. Let's uh, talk about what happened. What happened was when the pesticide DDT would run off the, the land from the soil into the water, that concentration of the pesticide was, was more. And then the small single-celled organisms like single-celled plants that utilize the water would have that concentration of pesticide buildup inside it. And then therefore, the further up the food chain you went, the higher the concentration was of this pesticide DDT in the bodies of the prey that were eaten, or excuse me, that were eaten. And so at the top of that list were the bald eagles. So how did they suffer? What happened was that DDT the concentrations built up so much in the eagle's body from all the prey it ate with those concentrations 
that the DDT actually caused the eggshells of the bald eagles to become weak and soft. And so when parents would go to incubate their own eggs, they would actually crush them under their own weight because the shells were so soft. And so this devastated the reproduction or the reproductive uh, populations of the bald eagle, especially in the lower uh, 48 states. If we look at the image on the right, you can see back in 1963, there were literally very few nesting pairs. And then by 2014, just with the ban of DDT, this statistic shows the population explosion since then. So the, the um, Endangered Species Act really saved the bald eagle with the banning of DDT. Courtship and mating. Eagles, depending on where they're at, uh, typically will begin courtship and mating in December. This is the most critical time period for uh, eagles because human interference or disturbances could lead to nest abandonment. And we don't want that because we want to keep our bald eagle populations healthy. Nest building follows the courtship and mating and then egg laying and incubation, then hatching and rearing and fledging. All this takes place over the span of about four months from beginning to end. When eagles decide to join and become mates, they perform a sky dance. The male will fly above the female and then they will grasp talons and spin in the air. So once they lock talons, it's solidifying or it's solidifying their, their connecting as a mated pair. I have a short video here. Hopefully I can get it to play and we will watch this in action. Oh, sorry about that. Hold on here. Let's see if I can go back to it. Well, all right. I guess I missed out on my video. Sorry about that, folks. That will be in uh, the addendum as well. So the sky dance video, it was, it was seen about a five second video clip of eagles locking talons and spiraling to the ground. Sometimes there have been fatalities when eagles haven't let go of their talons prior to getting too close to the ground. Um, but it is quite the death spiral is another term they use for the sky dance. Bald eagle nests can be five to six feet in diameter and two to four feet deep, depending on if the nest has been uh, reused or repurposed. Bald eagle nests can support the weight of full grown men. In fact, in the upper right hand image, there are two full grown men in that eagle nest. And these nests can weigh upwards of 2000 pounds. So almost the weight of a small car. Both the eagles, both the pair will build the nest, but the female does most of the construction of the nest and she will utilize whatever the male brings her sticks and grasses, moss, a lot of corn stalks. And depending on if it's a first year nest, it might take the eagles up to three months to build. But again, they will reuse the same nest year after year if they are the mated pair. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry, here my laptop's kind of not cooperating with me. So let me skip back a slide that we missed. That is that uh, eagles will have a clutch of one to three eggs and the eggs are about the size of a tennis ball. So they're rather large. And the eaglets, when they begin to hatch, they will use a pointed bump on their the top of their beak. It's a little white bump. It's called an egg tooth. And what they do is they bump that egg tooth against the shell on the inside and it causes it to begin to break in small pieces. And this can take an eaglet reabsorbs into the beak and it's no longer needed. So here's our here are our eaglets freshly hatched. You can see there's a lot of corn stalks in these nests here. Both the parents will feed the young. Um, Generally, it's the female that stays with the chicks constantly for the first two weeks and the male brings her food. The next three to six weeks, the chicks will begin to peck out food brought to the nest by the parents and they can be fed one time a day up to eight times a day. And this 
generally has to do with local prey populations and the ability of the parents to bring food to the nest. In three to four weeks, both the male and the female are taking turns at watching the chicks and going hunting. By six weeks, the female is one primarily still feeding the chicks. And anywhere between seven to nine weeks old, they're just about fully grown. Some things that might impact eaglets' ability to survive in the first year, because they only have a 50% survival rate the first year. These factors include disease, um, starvation, because there's not enough prey, uh, extremely bad weather, or that they're preyed upon by another species. Some chicks may also do what's called siblicide, and that means that they will kill other nestlings to try to further their chances of successful survival. Sorry about that there. There we go. Eaglets grow at about one pound gained every four to five days. They're holding their own head up by about two weeks old. At three weeks, they're already a foot tall and their beaks and talons are nearing adult size. That's hard to fathom at three weeks old an eagle's talons and beak are almost the size of a fully matured eagle. Four to five weeks, those chicks are already tearing up their own food. By six weeks, they're nearly adult size. And around week eight, so between seven and nine, week eight, they're testing those new flight feathers by stretching their wings. They'll stand on the edge of their nest and flap the wings. And then by 10 to 12 weeks, they will test those wings and take their first flight and become successful fledglings. So after this 10 to 12 weeks, and they're out on their own and they've had their first few days of flights, that's about four months from being in the nest to being on their own. But they will remain in the same close area as their parents for maybe another six weeks before they go off in nomadic wandering on their own to explore new territories before perhaps coming back to their home territory and seeking a mate or establishing a new territory elsewhere. I do wanna talk about the plumage of the bald eagles they look different each year until about uh, year five. In their second year, bald eagles have gone from mostly uh, a brown to some mottled white patches. If we look distinctly at the third year bald eagle, if we looked at the image quickly, some people who are familiar with red tail hawks would see this image and think, oh, red tail hawk, buff chest, some speckles in the dark wings. But if we look at the head, we can tell that that beak is distinctly an eagle. A fourth year eagle has most of its uh, white head with some white tail feathers underneath. And so at age five, it should have all its adult plumage. In these images, we can see eagles at various ages of development, years two, three, and almost four. So the juicy tidbit at the beginning of the program, I asked if anyone out there was familiar with our, our Bald Eagle Montgomery County residents. And I know a lot of you are. And some of you have seen eagles in various stages of development and thought, well, I think that's an eagle, but I'm not sure. And chances are you're right, because I just have a good feeling about that. I wanted to give you two locations of eagle nests that are here in Montgomery County, really, really located not far from town at all. And the first one is straight out Wabash Avenue down to the Rocky Ridge Landing where the Sugar Creek Public Canoe launches and the Sugar Creek Trailhead right there. Just across Sugar Creek on the north side, if you look up, there's a large sycamore tree. Sycamore trees have white bark and that's where the nest is located. And a lot of birders will congregate down there with their tripods and their binoculars and their cameras to watch the eagles nest every year. In addition to this location, there's one a little further outside, uh, further east of town. If you go out State Road 32 and just past the I-74 interchange, the first crossroads to the north is North County Road 550 East. And if you turn on that road, immediately you can see a bald eagle's nest off to the left. It also is in a sycamore tree. And so I would encourage you to visit these bald eagles 
nests, uh, whether they're actively nesting or not, just be quiet and observant and try not to disturb them. So we want to respect our bald eagle, not only because it's our national emblem, but because we want to respect uh, the bird's habitat, its life cycle, and its procreation. So to do this, we want to maintain our distance from the nest site. We want to minimize any visual or auditory impacts that might cause a disturbance during their nesting season. So we just want to be as friendly as possible so that we can learn more about bald eagles in action. So as we're beginning to draw to a close of the program this evening, I want to discuss a few of the Indiana bald eagle resources you can, as always, contact the Indiana Division, or excuse me, Indiana Department of Natural Resources, their Division of Fish and Wildlife. They have a whole page dedicated to bald eagle. The Indiana Audubon Society is a, is a good reference for the bald eagle too. And then if you're really into birds and you wanna see some, some eagle cam in action, an eagle cam is a live feed video of eagles on a nest. And if you go to Environmental Change Initiative, which is through Notre Dame University, you'll get access to this live cam. And so here is the link right there for your convenience. And this, as I mentioned, uh, when this program is posted to our website, you'll be able to access these resources then. National Bald Eagle Resources or apps for your phone include the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. You can visit allaboutbirds.org and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology has an app called Merlin Bird ID, which you can take into the field and use it to identify birds. So if you needed help identifying the bald eagle, it would be a great field resource. The National Audubon Society at audubon.org. And finally, the US Fish and Wildlife Service. I want to thank you all for attending tonight's program. Sorry about the couple technical glitches we had there this evening. It's always a learning experience. And as I mentioned, we'll have both the uh, video, or excuse me, both the, the audio clips of the bald eagle vocalizations, as well as the YouTube video link to the sky dancing uh, death spiral of the eagles. Uh, we will have those posted as addendums. Um, and for those of you Montgomery County residents who stuck around through this program and hopefully learned a bit or hopefully got a question about something that you didn't know and would like the answer to, or perhaps you just have a comment, I encourage you to send your question or comment to the email listed ask at cdpl.lib.in.us and just put in the, the title of the email, Eagle Program, so that way I can get those filtered to me. And uh, your name, be, please be sure to, to include your contact information. And that way, once your name is entered into the drawing for the birding binoculars, then we have uh, the ability to contact you. Again, I want to thank you for attending tonight's program. And I look forward to the next nature program on March 18th on the Sandhill Cranes. Thank you and good night.